Hey, y'all. Hey, Asia. Oh, shout out to Asia. Hey, girl. I'm sorry. Shout out to Asia for my braids. I know I'm just popping in like that, but I didn't see everybody on the line. So shout out to Asia for these braids. She is the truth in all sorts of ways. So y'all see, they're very neat. And I had to put this part over here because it's falling in my face. So y'all come on in. If y'all know anybody that works in childcare or is planning to open up a daycare, works with children, period. Today is the day that you get to learn some things. And even if you don't, just if you're here just to help people to become aware of what's out there and what these daycares um, are supposed to be doing. Let me just say that, okay? Because... I got a little phone call just recently, and it was very disturbing. It was very disturbing. And it's it's stuff that I see all the time, okay? It's, I, I've, I've gone to several different daycares, and I'm going to say shout out to those daycares who hire people to come in to train their staff. Let me just say that because everybody is not like that. Shout out to those daycares that send their staffs on training. And I'm not, and I'm, I'm going to give you guys the difference between a proper training and just getting by because we got to do better than this. So if y'all know anybody that works in the child care industry, if y'all want to know if today I'm a little hot today, but I'm not mad because I've been in those shoes and I understand on both sides. So I do want y'all to know that. Um. But yeah, this is uh, this is something that is definitely much needed. So thank you guys for tuning in. And please share. Hey, Latanya. Hey, girl. Shout out to my uh, my Monroe family and my Monroe followers. You know, people who watch me. Thank y'all for that. Thank you, Latanya. That's my girl. She is funny. You are a funny girl. I like funny people. I do. So I'm not a boring person. So, yeah. I'm not able to tag my daycare after dark. So, yeah. Let me see here. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself. I, I, I would have had my music playing today, but I'm going to tell y'all today was one of those days where I couldn't find that. My husband, he has like this old phone and he never uses it. So I actually use that phone for my music and I couldn't find that phone today, you know, so it's all good. But I ain't got no music. If y'all want me to beatbox, I'll do that. I want to keep y'all entertained. It's all good with me. I can do that. Because I do know how to beatbox. And for those of y'all that don't know, when I drink me a little something, something, I know how to rap. If y'all don't know, I know how to rap. I'll be freestyling. For real, for real. You can't be from Third Ward, Texas, and not know how to freestyle. Now, back in my day, I probably used to hit a little something, something. Not all the time. But then I used to think when I hit a little something, something, I was the freestyle queen. But I can't hit nothing right now. So I can't. You get, me, you get what I'm saying? I don't even want to hit nothing. But then when I used to, you know, not all the time, but I did hit me something, you know, every now and then. It wasn't never my thing, but I did. I'm like the president. I just didn't inhale. Not all the time. So anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome to Daycare After Dark. I bet y'all be like, dang, this lady be saying some stuff. But yes, I do, because this is Daycare After Dark. This is not a show for children. This is definitely not a show for children. If your children are watching, that's cool, because that's the parent that you are. You want, you, 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 you know, some people don't hide things from their children. I don't knock you for that. I'm not going to knock you for that. But I'm going to tell you, because... 
we we speak the truth around here, okay? So anything could come out of my mouth around here, but not just saying that you have to prepare yourself for that, but I just, I'm, I'm prepared to speak the truth. Now, I'm going to tell you what I'm not a person that does. I'm not a person that speaks my mind. I hate when people say that. They say, oh, I'm just the type of person that just speak my mind. Now, let me give y'all some education, okay? So y'all go look this up. There are 60,000 thoughts that run through your mind daily, okay? 60,000 thoughts on average that run through your mind daily, okay? So that means you're thinking of turning on the lights, you're thinking of going to bed, you're thinking of getting up, you're thinking of cooking, you're th I'm talking about all your thoughts. There are 60,000 thoughts that run through your head daily. Now, I'm going to tell you guys something about those thoughts. Out of those 60,000 thoughts, go look it up. About 85% of those thoughts are negative. Go look it up. I'm not lying to you, okay? Paula, you don't want me to flow, boo, because I'll go there. Give me a minute. I got to go hit me a little something. I mean, not hit, but drink me a little something, something. It's the same shit. You hit, you, you, you drink, you sip, you know. Eh, one is legal, one is not. Don't do the illegal stuff. I don't feel like going to jail. So anyway, look. So if 85% of those thoughts are negative, right? And you are a person that says, I speak my mind. Then do you think that what's coming out of your mouth is right? No. So... For those people that always brag about, you know, I'm just type person that just speak my mind. I need y'all to look at those people and say, you a damn fool because you ain't got no business speaking your mind like that. I'm going to say it again. 60,000 thoughts that run through your mind on average daily. 85% of those thoughts are negative. So the person that loves to say, I speak my mind nine times out of 10, what your ass is saying ain't always right. And you're going to have to go back and apologize to a lot of people. But because you speak your mind, you think you're doing something. So nine times out of ten, you ain't going to admit that you're wrong anyway. I'm just telling you the truth. Okay? So listen. Paula, I got you on the freestyle, boo. But you, I told you I got to hit me a little wine or something. You got to, I got to, I can't just be. And then I got to watch what I say because sometimes when I'm freestyling, people taking my rhymes and putting it in their albums and shit. And then I be trying to figure out where they got that from. I don't want everybody copying my stuff. But I do got, I got some rhymes. I got some nursery rhymes. They good too though. Wait, wait on it. Y'all think I'm playing, but wait on it. So listen, I am going to go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Shanita Vital Davis, AKA the Classroom Management Diva, baby. AKA Mrs. I'm here to help you get your ish together. That's right. When we talk about the issue, we're talking about your influence, your saving, and your healing. Now, let's face it. If you're not influencing, saving, or healing somebody or yourself, that means that you're operating in that other issue. You know, you're ignorant the stuff that you just don't know. And we're all ignorant to some degree. Okay? You ain't supposed to know everything. Okay? You ain't supposed to know how to work on a damn car. Just because you got one. That's why they make mechanics. All right? So, your self-gratifying behaviors, you know, the stuff that says, this just feels better to me. It's selfish. It says, you know what? I'm not going to change for nobody. So sometimes when you develop those behaviors, especially us in childcare, we got to be, we got to, we, 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 we really have to watch that. My daycare providers, my childcare providers, my directors, all y'all, you, y'all got to be careful with that. Okay. And then your hurts. We come through this thing with a lot of hurts, a lot of tears, a lot of fears, and most of that stuff is caused by trauma. So you better be careful with that too, okay? So listen. All right. So today's topic is going to be about the disservice that we do to these teachers and... Nah, okay, we're we going to talk about that, Paula, what happens when you don't speak your mind, okay? That's a horse of another color, but you know when people always say like, oh, I speak my mind, I just say what's on my mind. You don't always have to say what's on your mind. You give us Because everything don't matter that comes on your mind. And then your ass don't need to tell everybody what's on your mind anyway. You know, I'm going to tell you, we're going to get to that part. So you better hold that, sis, because I got something for you on that one. Okay, so listen, the topic. Back to the topic. So today's topic is going to be about the disservice that we do these children in these daycares and the disservice that we do to these teachers in these daycares by not having our staff properly trained. 
Okay, I'm gonna say that again. We do these, we do the future of the whole United States a disservice when we don't properly have these teachers trained. We do our teachers a disservice when we don't properly have them trained. And I'm gonna tell you guys something in the early education field, everybody is required to have 25 to 35 hours annually. Okay, I'm gonna say that again 25 to 35 hours annually. Most of the time, and I'm going I'm, I'm to be honest with y'all, most of the time you find that directors just want to make sure that you get those hours so that they can make sure that they're following the minimum standards and their teachers are suffering as a result of it because nine times out of ten they're going online, nine times out of ten they're sending their teachers to trainings that they don't need, okay? Don't send me on no damn minimum standards training when you should be working with me on that probably once a month you know, keeping me up to par on that. Don't send me on no damn minimum standards training. Don't send me on no trainings about no lesson planning when I know lesson planning. Now you can keep me on my toes, that's different, but pay attention to me because I may be struggling in a whole nother area and you're sending me to trainings for something else. Or you're not sending me to training. What you're doing is you're allowing somebody to come in to give you some paperwork that says, fill out these, check yes or no, uh, like a workbook. Now, how in the hell are you supposed to be educating children and you you doing workbook trainings? Now, if a child learns, okay, they said that there are three ways that a child learns. It's auditory, visual, or kinesthetic. Now, they got this whole thing that says seven ways, whole body, um, you know, through so many other things. And, and we're going to get to that. But there are more ways. to. So, here's the thing. If a person, because we never stop learning the same, okay? We never stop learning the same. So if you are, if you were an auditory learner, you're going to be an auditory learner. If you're a person that learns through music, that's that's just how you learn. Okay? That's just how you learn. If you're a visual learner, somebody who sees things and and and, and can um and and and, and can have, you know, memorize them and and do all that, that that's cool. A lot of the times we spank our kids because we say, "Yeah, you know that song. You you know how to rap that song. You know every word to that song, but you don't know how to, um, you don't know how to, you don't know these ABCs. You don't know how to recognize your numbers. Well, maybe because your ass probably need to be singing to the baby, the ABCs and the numbers. We'll get into all that. So I can't be mad at you. Remember, this is the reason that we don't have our ears together because of ignorance. Okay. Sometimes we just don't know. I ain't mad at you for that. Okay. But I'm, I'm a little upset and disturbed at some of these child care providers. This is one of those days today. I'm just disturbed. So I'm going to tell you, I got a phone call uh, Thursday. I got a phone call Wednesday. And a young lady contacted me and she says, um, hi, how are you? I said, I'm fine. She said, um, I was calling you because I'm interested in um, doing some training with you. I said, okay, that's cool. Okay, that's fine. So I'm running things down to, and I asked her, I said, is there anything in specific that you're wanting to be trained on? And the young lady said, everything. I said, so you're new in child care? She goes, no. I said, okay. Well, how long have you been in child care? She says, well, I've been in child care for over a year now. I said, okay, okay. Um, and I said, well, um, let's start off with this. Um, so are you interested in, in environment, you know, like with uh, the, the, you know, your, your environment in your classroom, um, lesson planning? Um, uh, what is it that what is it that sparks your interest the most? You know, just trying to give her something to start off with. Are you having issues in the classroom with behaviors? She said all of it. Now, that's not uncommon. For you to have issues in all areas. She's only been there for a year. So I said, you know what? I like you. Because you just lay it out on the line. I don't know a damn thing. You just in there teaching people cheering and you don't know shit. And that's not uncommon. Because we learn along the way. All right. Not mad at that. So I asked her the question. I said, okay. So how much training have you had? You know, have you ever... She said, well... What my director does, there's a, a lady who comes in and, you know, she trains us on things like, you know, how to properly wash our hands, um, 
how the, you know, how the children, you know, basically like the minimum standard stuff. And I said, okay, well, that's definitely something that you have to know, you know, and how to deal with, you know, and then I asked her, well, you know, about how is it that you guys are dealing with the behaviors? Have you ever done any training on behaviors? She's like, no. I said, no online training? No. Uh, nothing. Okay. Fine. So then we get to this part. She says, I haven't done really any training except like, you know, on the minimum standards. And I see this so often. So I asked the young lady, I said, okay, well, I'm definitely willing to work with you. But what we're going to start it start with is the changing of your mind first. I always like whenever I go into a child care setting and I go and I look around and I observe the daycare, I'll know when I first walk in the daycare what is wrong. When the first moment that I walk into a classroom, the environment will tell me everything about that daycare, about that classroom, not about the daycare, but about that classroom. So when I walk into a daycare and I look at the environment in that daycare, and we're not just talking about children running around because it is not uncommon for a child to be, our, our, uh, you know, um, out of control. You get what I'm saying? But it's the things that you have on the wall. It's the way that your daycare is set up. I mean, the classrooms are set up. It'll tell you everything. I've been in this thing long enough that when I walk in there, I say, they need this, 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 and that. Okay? So I know that. Right? Now, what happens is this. So the young lady tells me that the first thing that you want to do, you want to change the mindset of your, your teachers because she's never worked in education before. Okay, she's never worked in child care. So I'm going to tell you, when I first started off in child care, I wanted to whoop everybody's child's ass. Did you see how I said that? I said ass. When you say ass like that, that means you really want to whoop them. Because that's what you know. I grew up in an environment where that's what we got. We got spanked for everything that we did. So when you have a child that comes in that's spitting, that's hitting, that's cursing, that's tearing up your stuff, the first thing that you have to do is change your mindset, okay? You have to know and understand that these children have to learn everything because they don't come with the mindset of knowing those things. So it is definitely your duty to make sure that you instill those values. The second thing that you have to recognize is this, that when those children are walking into your environment, now they do come from home. And I'm going to tell you what we have a big problem with saying in the child care field, we always say that parents get, that we always blame everything on the parents. Everything doesn't come from a parent. If a child has been in, in child care setting from birth up until preschool years, guess what? I'm going to tell you something. Your ass is just as responsible for what that child does. If not more responsible, because I'm going to tell you something, the average child is in the daycares at least eight to 10 hours a day. That's average. So if my child is in your daycare eight to 10 hours a day, that's normally from eight to five o'clock. Okay. Eight to five o'clock, a little bit longer. So they're eating with you. They're napping with you. They're learning with you. Okay. They're doing all of these things. So by the time they, the parent gets, picks up that child, it's about five, six o'clock. The child usually is in bed about 8 to 9 o'clock. So you mean to tell me from 6, 7, 8, 9, 4 hours out of that day, my child is really spending with me and not to mention the weekends. So do you really think that they're getting everything from me or from my environment? Your environment is everywhere. It's not just in your home. It's everywhere. When you walk outside your home, that's your environment. So we got to stop seeing that too. So the second thing is that we have to stop blaming everything on the parents. And, say, the parents need to do this, and the parents need to do that. Let's get that out of our heads. Because once that child is in your classroom, do I say that the parent needs to be responsible and involved? Hell yeah. Because it ain't your job to babysit and take care of nobody's kid and they don't do nothing. Because some of y'all parents be doing that. And I'm being honest with you. Y'all got to stop doing that. Don't think just because your child come home, you think that you're just going to dump everything on the daycare where they did all day. Didn't no, you still need to be instilling those values in your children and doing all that stuff. So then we change the mindset. First, we change the mindset and then we move on to everything else. 
And that's changing the mindset is not a one and done thing. It's something that is repetitive because that's how we learn through repetition. I don't care what it is. Okay. So the young lady tells me that, and it was very disturbing to me, but then I had to remember this. Everybody doesn't know. Okay. Everybody doesn't know. Everybody just, you know, everybody doesn't know, you know, um, there, especially if you're walking, you know, even if you open up a daycare, some of us have home daycares, I, I'm home daycare setting, but I thank God that I came from the brick and mortar first and then to the home daycare setting. Now, the blessing that I had was that the person who, um, I worked under, she was a certified principal. So we went to region four trainings and we, you know, that's all she did was make sure that we were trained, trained, trained. At first I thought, I said, she kind of weird because why is this lady constantly sending us to all of these trainings? We already know some of this stuff, but she was, she was, she was the person that wanted us to understand that it's not a one and done thing that it has to be repetitive. Like even if you have, even if you think you have classroom management down pat, you go and take on some other stuff with classroom management. You go and print out some articles for your staff on classroom management. Okay, because that makes or breaks everything is the way that you manage your classroom. And I'm going to tell you guys something. Oftentimes we believe that managing your classroom is you being able to have power and control over those kids. But if you are a true manager over that classroom, you ain't, you don't have to do anything. The only thing that you have to do is redirect. But your children should be so well trained. OK, that they should be able to teach that class by themselves. Everything should be so repetitive that they should tell you, hey, Miss Vital, you, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be doing math right now. That's management. OK, because I'm going to tell you what I used to do and I ain't tooting my own horn, but I am at the same time. OK, I would leave out of my classroom and I would tell one of my kids, hey, because, you know, my leaving out the classroom is going to the kitchen for me. OK. I'm in home daycare city. But I would say, hey, Daphne, I need you to do the alphabet on the board today. And so Daphne would mimic me to the T. And Daphne would say, okay, what letter is this? And they would say, hey. And then she would switch it up and she would tell them, good job, kiss your brain. Because it was an everyday, all day task that they understood from the moment that they walked into the classroom up until the time that they left, they had to follow that schedule. Okay? So now we have teachers who are in the classroom who are suffering greatly. And I'm going to be honest with you with dealing with behaviors. And it is so easy for a director to walk into that room, okay, and say, you need to do this and you need to do that and you need to do this. And then you go back and you look at their file and they've had no training on that. And the thing about it is, is that I'm not going to lie to you. I think that it is a beautiful thing that directors train their staff. But don't nobody want, want you training their asses every, every week, every month. They need something new. They want to be refreshed. They want to get out. They want to enjoy themselves. They're people. So no, they don't want to be trained by you all the time. They don't want to be reprimanded by you all the time. They don't. They don't. So train your staff. I mean, train your staff. That is a beautiful thing. I'm not going to take that from you directors, but I'm going to tell you guys what y'all do and y'all wrong for that. Have somebody come in and just train your staff sometimes. I don't know how many people I've, I, I, I've walked into daycares where I can obviously tell that something is wrong. And I would say, hey, you know what? I'll train your staff free on that. And you know, they'll say, no, I'm, I'm just going to send them the X, Y, and Z. I've had free trainings and there are people that still won't send their staff to training. I'm talking about on social and emotional development, the most important component of you being able to manage that classroom and y'all asses still won't do it. That's pride. That is so much pride. Come on. I will, I'm going to tell you something, Sandra. Taylor of Tiny Toes Academy, shout out to you, baby girl, because I'm going to tell you something that you did. You made sure we were there. You made sure that we were there. And as a result of that, I was able to manage my class. I remember there being a time where I was out of ratio because the teacher got sick. And I sat there with 25 kids in my class until I could get somebody in there. And when I tell you, I managed that classroom with my eyes closed. 
because I knew I always I, I was forever learning. I was forever learning, always ever learning. She never stopped sending us on training. Go, go, go. It was to the point to where she would say, what do you want to learn? And the thing about it is, this is the saddest part. I'm, I'm going to be honest with y'all. Can I, can I be honest with y'all? Can I tell y'all the truth? There are programs that are free. Free programs that come into your school and they will revamp your whole school. And you have people that will turn those programs down and say, I don't want this program because I don't want you in my business. Your business is public business because it's a business. It's a daycare. You get what I'm saying? So at any point in time, you should be doing everything to the point to where other people can come in and you not have that problem. But for you to keep under training your staff, man, that's wrong. I'm going to tell you something. That's like putting a lethal weapon in somebody's hand because this is what these children do. They suffer at home. They suffer from sexual abuse mental abuse, physical abuse, neglect. And neglect is not just kids coming in and smelling like pee every day. That's not the only neglect. Sometimes the parents are so tired that they just don't have time. Sometimes neglect for them is being that child that's stuck in the middle. Sometimes neglect for them is mama just had a baby and I'm not getting the same attention that I used to get before. And so we do our children a disservice. And this is the future of our country. Okay? This is the future. Huh. Come on now, Paula Henry. Speak, preach, girl. Do you want, do y'all need to bring you on here? So you can do like a little prayer and all that. Because I know you be praying. Yes. We do them a disservice. Because now you have children that grow up. And they put guns in their hands. Now, I'm, I'm not going to blame it all on early education. But there are moments in time where we can educate educate our parents, educate our teachers. There should be parenting classes that take place. If I'm going to teach you how to change your mind, I may need to teach you how to change your parental mind. Same time. I, I'm going to tell you something. My church, my church hired me to come in to do their training. And knowing that I talk the way I talk sometimes. They're on here. They see it. But they entrusted what I knew, the information that I knew so well to the point to where they hired me to come in, okay, to train people who are not getting paid because they don't have to do that. These are parents. These are volunteers. These are people who've never worked in the field, but just says, I'm a volunteer at my church because I need something to do and I don't want to be at church and not feel like I'm not being a part of the program. So they go and they do that. And they've had me come in to train their staff on several occasions. And I'm going to tell you, I ran into a lady and I ain't selling myself, but I'm telling you the importance of it. Okay. This is a church that does not have a daycare, but just um, an area on Sundays where they um, minister to kids. And I did that. And I ran into a lady and the lady gave me a ride because something was issue with my truck. And she said, you changed my life. And I said, me? You know, me? You talk to me? Yeah. How is that? She said, you did the training at Word of Restoration Church. And she said, as a parent, that changed my life. I said, you know what? That's all right. Because even as a parent, even as a volunteer, okay, there are things that we simply just don't know. And she said, now when those children misbehave in the classroom with me, I know how to deal with it. I know that there are things that are deeply rooted, much deeper than I have an understanding for. So when they come here, I need to be their peace. It's almost like being in a marriage. Sometimes you just have to be your partner's peace. Because we don't know the thoughts that they have on a day-to-day basis. They're not going to share all their thoughts with you. So that's the same thing with the child. Remember, at a certain age... Children, they, one, they cannot verbalize. Two, their vocabulary is not that developed. Okay? Their vocabulary is not that developed. And so I may not have the words to tell you. I may not be able to tell you that I'm dealing with issues at home. 
So now when you get these kids and you're constantly sending them to timeout, you're constantly redirecting them in the most negative way because you just don't know because you're using those same methods that grandma that grandma used on that great grandma used on grandma that grandma used on your mother that your mother used on you and then you say i turned out fine but the first thing you want to do is whoop ass i ain't gonna lie wanted to whoop some ass a whole lot of thumbs in the daycare okay but you don't have to i have a little boy i ain't gonna say his name but i, I promise you when he first got here i was like i'm gonna get him boy you gonna get you gonna get it in my mind just you know not really saying i'm gonna get him but i'll be like you gonna, boy you gonna make me get you but i had to learn him and i knew i had to learn him I had to learn him and I had to understand him and I had to watch him and I had to understand, I had to know, I, get, I had to get to know him and then I got to understand his environment and then I got to show him what love was really like because even the Bible tells us that love is patient, it's kind, it's, it's all of those things but we don't practice that and I'm going to tell you something, you can change a child just by loving them because sometimes they're not getting that at home but how many of us know that? We don't know. We simply don't know. But as a director, as an owner of a daycare, as a lead teacher, come on, man. We got to do better. We got to do better. It's important that we do better. You should be training your staff. Your staff should. I'm going to tell you something. And I tell parents, because I have parents that say, how can I know if a daycare is a good daycare? Go look in that file. If all they have is the same person training their staff over and over and over again? Or the, the, and I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. But if they got the same person constantly coming in and showing them the same stuff over and over again, that's not training. That's getting by. Because training is understood. You should be in that classroom. And if you don't know, because I'm going to tell you something. Some people specialize in business. And I don't knock them for that. Some of y'all good at business. Some of y'all are good at learning how to run a daycare. Okay? But boy, it's beyond business. This ain't just no business thing. Not with no daycare. Not with no daycare. This ain't just no business. Because you have a duty. There are gifts and talents that are being developed there. You're talking about the next president. When, you, when you're talking to a teacher... An educator, a preschool teacher on up to a high school teacher. Man, you're dealing with the president of the United States. You're dealing with nurses. You're dealing with doctors. You're dealing with comedians. You're dealing with the next architect. You're dealing with the next actor. You're dealing with the next singer. You're responsible for that. This ain't just no business. You're talking about stuff that is going to carry. You're talking about that same person that's going to care for you in that nursing home. If you have to go. You're talking about the same person that's going to care for you in the nursing field. And then they say, oh, this person had Munchausen syndrome and was killing people in the, um, in the ER just so they can look like something. But we never taught that child how to love on themselves enough that they didn't need the attention from others. So you have people who grow up with that inside of them and they walk into those hospitals and they killing people simply because they need attention. Man, this ain't that type of business. You ain't got time for that. It ain't just no business. And if that's what you think it is, you're going to have to do better. Because it's not just a business. You're nurturing minds. You're growing children. And I'm going to be one to tell you, there are moments where I have fallen off. Because there are times when I just felt like daycare, I just don't want to do it. But I had to regroup and come back to myself and say, Shanita, your purpose is much bigger than you think it is. I don't want a child to come through me and go shoot up a school. I don't want that. Am I fully responsible for it? No. But I'm going to tell you something. A lot of this stuff that everybody is doing, that stuff be foundational, man. Stuff that you can simply... Take care of others so young. 
And where did this where does that start? The foundation starts with preschool from the womb. They say by the time a child is seven years old, and most children they are in preschool up until the age of five. So that means from birth up until five years, you mean to tell me I'm responsible for some of the stuff that's going on within them? Because by the time they get to like um the 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 uh primary schools, you get what I'm saying? They've already developed so many different behaviors. And then we send them to the schools and we, we, we make it hard for the other teachers to be able to teach. You should be so focused on getting that child socially and emotionally developed that they can sit in that classroom and learn. That boy, the boy that I'm telling you about right now, he couldn't do that. But he sat down long enough when I taught him how to be, when I, when I realized what he needed, I'm like, he's a manly man. He likes to stick his chest out. It's my boy. Okay. All you have to do is give him a job. I realized he just wants to help. He was my George of the bunch. What is the George? Watch Curious George long enough. And you'll realize that there are a lot of kids who are Georges. They just simply want to help. But it doesn't look like help to us because we don't understand children. We don't. When George, George will look at that bucket and he'll say, oh, the man with the yellow hat, he didn't finish the fence. So I'm going to go finish it for him. And he's really trying to help. He's trying to help. Sometimes he'll go take that paint and he'll paint the wall and the fence because he feels like that's what you need. Only for you to come back to say, oh my God. This is not what I wanted to do. And then you're hitting them in the back and you're beating them and you, you, you're talking. You go sit down. Time out. You don't need to. Be. And they're really just saying, I just wanted to help you. So now they lose that and they say, I don't want to help nobody. Because if I help you, then this is what you're going to do. So then you have to teach them how to help. How do you teach them how to help? You get your staff trained on how to teach them how to help. That's right, Paula. It's in your heart. So I'm going to go back to some of these. Um... Thank you, Mr. Timothy Davis. He says, yes, Ms. Vital Davis, you are teaching tonight. Thank you. The children are our future and they are missing out. Paula, that's what Paula Henry says. Absolutely. Paula worked in early education. As a matter of fact, I think you told me you even got your, um, um, I don't know if it was the associates or you got like um, certification. For that, but either way it goes. She says keyword. She said the church keyword. Amen. Hmm. It's not everyone. She says it's in your heart. Absolutely. I don't want y'all to confuse the heart right here. This is your heart. Okay, your heart is your mind. That's where your heart is. Your heart is your mind. What's in your mind it'll show through your walk. Because your your, your 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 beating heart, it has only one function, and that is for it to pump blood, okay? And for it to, to keep you, you know, pumping the blood or whatever. At least that's what, you know, now don't get me wrong. So, but that's what it is. Your heart is in your mind. So whatever is in your mind, it will show through your walk. That's why when people say, well, I ain't that kind of person. Well, your walk is different. Your walk says that you are that kind of person. Until you change your mind, and then you're not that type of person anymore. You know? You can't say, well, you know. And sometimes our mind tells us to do things that we shouldn't be doing, and we do them. And, hey, it is what it is. But you can always come back, revamp, and walk a different light. And learn how to train your mind. But, again, we do our staff a disservice. How are you having these people coming in and working with you? And a lot of the times they, they don't they don't know. They want to work with kids so bad and they develop such a love for it. But there are so many people that leave the field because they never got to. They loved it. They wanted to do it. But then they say, man, it's, it's too. I, I, I hear people say that all the time. And it is a very difficult field at times. It can be very difficult. I don't care how much information you have, how much you know. Being, a, being an educator can be very difficult especially a preschool teacher. I have to teach you everything that you need to know. Everything. I had one daycare, and some of y'all staff, y'all y'all damn hard-headed. Y'all think y'all know so much that y'all don't know a damn thing. 
Y'all know so much that y'all don't know nothing. And I'm just being truthful. Because I've walked into daycares where I've had them, where I had uh, this one daycare and the lady had me coach these classrooms, right? It was about three classrooms. And I would go in there and the, because this lady had so much control over the classroom on what she did and how she did things and everybody just adored her and just, you know, made her like the idol of the daycare because she goes in and she knows how to be tough with the kids and she knows how to get them to do what she wants them to do. But as soon as she leaves out the classroom, all hell works loose. That's not having control. That's not classroom management. That's no, <laughs> no, it's not. Because you shouldn't be the only person that has control over your classroom. Your Anybody should be able to come in and teach your classroom. I don't care who it is. A stranger off the street because your children should be that much aware of their environment. That much aware of what they have to do for the day. That much. That much. Okay? And so I worked at this daycare and I'm helping out. And this young lady, I'm telling you, like during lunchtime... She never used the transition, okay? Um, she would just say, and she was very loud, which some teachers are very loud, but you don't have to be that loud. So she would say, okay, boys and girls, everybody line up. And the kids would get chaotic. And she would say, Miss So-and-so, grab such and such, and you get her, and you get her, and you hold those three, and I'm going to hold these. Hell no. I'm like the Pied Piper. You don't have to do all that. You don't have to do all that. Okay? You should be able to, and the children who have behavioral issues, yes, but you shouldn't be holding everybody's hand and everybody shouldn't be grabbing it. You should be transitioning those kids to the point to where um, they're so focused on what it is that you're doing. So I would sing the wheels on the bus go round and round. And it was like God to them. And they're watching it. And then I would say, the children on the bus, they line on up. So I taught them how to line up. How do you teach them how to line up? You show them, you demonstrate, so they line up, okay? I worked at another daycare where I used to tell the children, because I don't use the same transition phrase. Let me finish telling you this part, though. So anyway, the kids, they um they would be so chaotic. They would sit at the table, and they would get up, and they would put these children in the high chairs and latch them down, and it was just too much. And so I told her, I said, if you want them to learn how to sit at the table, you have to sit with them. You know, she wouldn't do that. So I said, okay, I'll tell you what. I want you to give me your toughest kids. And, and I want you to keep all the good kids. All the kids that you, you know, say are your good kids, your, your kids that are going to listen. I want you to give me the toughest ones that you have. And if, if, if my method works, then you owe me a lunch. She was like, okay, okay, okay. Because I'm not going to sit with no kids. I'm not about to be sitting with no kids and no daycare because my job is to watch them. Okay. I get you, sis. You smart. Smart. <laughs> okay. So I, I sat with the kids for one week. One week. And guess what happened? Those kids were total different kids. Her kids, still chaotic. One week. That was it. Because... And everybody else started sitting with the kids. They were like, if we just sit with the kids and then you talk to them and ask them, how's your day? How's your meal? What are you eating? Are those green beans? You're developing their vocabulary. It's not just you sitting there. Come on, Paula Henry. Girl, you need to come on back to child care. You, you playing. You sleep and do whatever you want to do. But I'm, 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 you need to come on back. You know too much. You know way too much. And you got that pretty little old house over there that you need to be having a home daycare. But I ain't going to go there, though. Okay, so yes, set with those kids and I asked them, they learned about food, they learned about their eating utensils, they learned how to say please and thank you. I worked at another daycare, did the same thing and I would transition the kids with a drum. I know it may have been noisy down the hallway, but that's how we would move because we had children that were very young. I had never worked with two-year-olds before like that, but I got them to do what I needed them to do. I used to say, show me your, I, I used to say, um, show me your weight hands. They would wait. Then I would say, now show me those marching feet. And I would beat that drum. Boom. 
and they would just come down the hall and they would come out the door and I had one teacher to the back and one teacher to the front and then you always have somebody that wants you to do it differently. If it's working, leave them alone. Sometimes your teachers are doing just fine, but some of y'all directors, y'all want to come in. This needs to be done like this and it needs to be done like that. They don't need all that all the time. Sometimes what they're doing is working. Let it work. Y'all be bossing too hard. <laughs> it's okay to be a boss, but calm your ass down. Like, get in there with your teachers. You should be in the classroom working with your teachers, but y'all want to point fingers and tell them. I had a daycare director that told me, do not pat the kids down for sleeping. We don't do all that. They don't need all that. But you have children who have trouble sleeping. No, we pat. We still pat to this day. I had a lady that works for me, Miss Cheney. She came the other day. She was like, man, I worked at this daycare. And they would get so upset with me because I would pat the kids down. Sometimes they need that. And sometimes they get to a point to where they don't need it. But what else are you doing? Because they should be cleaning up their own messes, throwing their own food away. I'm talking about I had two-year-olds doing that. Okay? That's what management is about. You directors, you owners of these daycares, I'm not dawning on you. Sometimes you just don't know, but take the boss, just the bossiest hat off and stop pointing these people in the direction that you want them to go into and you're not sitting with them and educating them and having the right people to come in to make sure that your staff is okay because they are going home with headaches. They are going home stressed out. They are coming back stressed out and they are dealing with your children and, and any time your ass can end up on the news simply because you did not get your, tra your staff trained and you want to sit there and tell them what they need to be doing. That don't work. That does not work. I have, I'm telling you, for the summer, I have junior teachers that come in and I work with them and I educate them right then and there. These are junior teachers. Ha, Paula Henry, pat your ass down, laugh all out for real. Yes, pat them down. If they can't sleep, pat them down. You don't know what they went through. Before they got to you, where well, they may have trouble sleeping, pat them down. It's okay. Rub them, rub their little heads, rub their little backs. Sometimes they just want to be loved. Just give me a little love, Miss Vital. I can't sleep. My mom and dad, they've been fighting all night. I, I need to sleep. I can't. I'm a human first. Because sometimes when you up fighting and arguing with your spouse all night, you can't sleep. So how you in the hell you want them to sleep? We got to do better. We got to do better. So get your staff trained. If you need training, come through me. I promise you. The way that I educate teachers, it's not just... I don't do worksheets with them. I don't. Because that I want it to stick. I have a whole training... I have a whole training called Classroom Management 911 that teaches them all the components of how to work the classroom. And I come in and I work with them. I do. I teach them everything that they need to know on how to manage that classroom. And then I even let them come and work with me for a little bit sometimes. So they, they have a clear understanding. And if that's not what you want, because some day kids, they don't want to expose their teachers to other day kids because they're scared that the teacher might leave. I understand that that's hard because it's hard to find good help. But if you train your staff properly, sometimes they don't want to go because they're so happy with where they are that they just don't want to go. They, they love you. Your staff loves you. They love the daycares. They really do. I stayed at my daycare for five years. That's not the longest time. But I started training staff my fourth year there because I loved it. I wanted other people to know what I knew. I had... I wanted them to know what I knew. I had teachers that would say, man, I, I want, our parents that would say, I want my, my baby to be in Miss Vital's class. Yeah. You know, that's what you want. Train your staff. I'm not making, I'm not talking down on you, hurt, trying to hurt you. I'm not. But train your people so that they know. Don't just keep sending them to these same people that's giving them these worksheets so that they can make their 25 to 35 hours. Don't just give them that. Okay? I'm going to tell you something. If a staff member leaves and they were a good staff member, that's okay. 
because you always find people who want to work there. You you will always find. I, I had to learn that people are gonna come and go. It's a business. That part is business. But I don't want. What I never wanted was for a person to leave because they said that I'm not trained enough. And I, I have, I've had people that have come to me to say, you know what, um, this is just simply not what I want to do. And that was okay. I had some people who, where life happened and it was hard for them. Um, that's going to happen because it's a business still at the end of the day. You know, it's, it's a business. And so we, we can't forget that part. So if they leave, let them leave. Somebody else will come. Somebody that because prayer, hey, prayer will bring somebody back. But I'm gonna tell you what you don't want to do. You don't want to leave. You want you don't want a great staff to leave for something that you could have prevented. That's what you don't want. You don't want that. You don't want that. You know, um, train them. Get them trained. Um, give them the tools that they need. Have somebody come in. Coach your teachers. There are free programs that are out there. Okay, you have collaboratives for children. You have the Texas Rising Star. You have the Texas School Ready. Um, you have Macy. You have all of these different programs that will come. You have the Beach Program. Um, you have all of these different programs, especially um, for um, for for schools who have um, low income families or whatever, you know, for families that receive NCI or who are food for like the food programs and things like that. And that's okay. You know, have them come in and um, have them. I mean, that Sandra Taylor, she had every program. Um, she had every, I mean, man, we were in every program that you could possibly name. Every program that you can name. Oh, you said, no, I'm not speaking of your training. What happens when you leave? No, I'm not speaking of your training. The workers have to keep it going. Absolutely. You're damn right. Your workers, I don't know why some of y'all believe that your workers are, <laughs> that's your meat and potatoes. You want to take care of your workers. They, they, yeah, please take care of them. Please give them bonuses. Uh, but more so, more than anything, give them knowledge. Educate them. Do that, please. I'm begging you, please get your staff training. There is a there is a training that I do, and it's for parents and for teachers, and it's called Teaching with the Twist and Parenting with the Twist. Teaching with the Twist can be done online now. I have it where I can do it online. I have it where I can come out with just your staff, um, and I have it where you can do it at Painting with the Twist. I am connected through Painting with the Twist, and so. If you guys desire to do that class there, I'm very open to doing it there, and that's all good. So if you guys desire to have your staff trained the right way, okay, holler at me. Let, let's get them done. Let's have some fun while we're doing it, though, because I don't do boring training. I don't like to sit down just all day just lecturing. That's not my thing. I'm going to have you moving. We're going to play some fun games, and it's going to stick, and you're going to understand when you leave. So, um yeah, you can lead the horse to water. So I'm hoping that some some of you change your minds and share this because some people need to hear this, okay? Um, but yeah, go get your staff trained. It's, we're, we're doing the future a disservice by not doing that, okay? So anyway, I think it's time for me to go, y'all. Ooh, hoo hoo, it's time for me to go. But thank you, Paula, so much, girl. You, you know what? I'm mad at you, though. I'm going to tell you why, I, why I'm mad at you. Because you on here sharing all this information, but your little butt, but B U T, your little B U T T won't um won't work in the fields. You need to get your own daycare. Even if you gotta start off in that big beautiful home of yours. I just seen your house. You need to do something, girl. Stop playing. So yes, yeah, so shout out to all of my educators that are on here today. Um, shout out to all of my preschool teachers um, who are working in a daycare. Shout out to my directors. Um, shout out to all y'all. I love y'all. Y'all like everything. Paul, I ain't playing with you. Okay? 
Hey, Crystal. How are you, girl? Hey, beautiful. So anyway, look, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. If you guys know someone that is in need of trainings, okay, hit me up. 281-380-6997. I'm going to be like Mike Jones. You know how you say his number over and over again. So 281-380-6997. Hit me up. Get your staff trained. I'll come in, observe your staff. Um... Don't go there, Miss Paula Henry talking about I was speaking my mind. You know what? We were supposed to address that, but I'm going to call you on that one. So um, that's my girl. Shout out to Krista McCullough, okay? So yeah, so go ahead and get your staff trained. If you know someone that is in need of training uh, or that has a child care business, um, then let them watch this. So I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. It's me, your girl, Shanita Vital Davis, a.k.a. the Classroom Management Diva, a.k.a. Mrs. I'm here to help you get your wish together.